I mean, I care about Gambit. Uh, I'm going to post something in here. Cool. Will you just read that? I'm going to adjust your audio quality in my recording software. Just That gives you something okay. to read so I can adjust it instead of just saying, yeah, do you, does it sound okay. good? Yeah, sure. So whether we wanted it or not, we've stepped into a war with the Cabal on Mars. So let's get to taking out the command one by one. Valus Tarek, from what I can gather, he commands siege dancers from an Imperial land tank just outside of Rubicon. He's well protected. But with the right team, we can punch through those defenses, take this beast out, and break their grip on Freehold. Thank you for the read. My pleasure. And that is, I'm not trying to con people into reading that. I'm just, I legit did that with somebody else earlier today, and it actually gets people enough to think about talking. So it really works really well to mm -hmm. get their audio going. So then you also have a copy of everybody saying the same meme. It could exactly. Exactly. So this, this podcast that I'm doing is kind of based on in improving yourself both as a, as a content creator. Um, and as a gamer, since mm -hmm. everybody that I'm going to be doing on this podcast is going to be probably gaming. Um, mm -hmm. The things that, that you excel in, obviously, are Twitch. I know you don't post a lot on YouTube. I did look you up. You do have, you do have a lot of cool stuff on there, though. I will admit, you had a lot more than what I thought. Uh, obviously, Thanks. Twitch partner. I used partner. to a lot more. Um, a lot regularly during D1 days. Yeah. Um. And I did do some stuff in relation to Gambit, like the uh, the law books and stuff that came up with Gambit. I, I read those. Yeah, I sold People those. People to like them. So, and, and but I didn't I, really do anything massively out of that. And then I had my little, my little maybe the a week thing, which was... Uh, <laughs> it's actually a very miniature but kind of cool guide to Gambit Prime. <laughs> Which one was the movie of the week one? That was the shark uh, Gambit Prime. Uh, Gambit uh, shark. Do, 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 that one. Is it the most recent video you have? Yeah. Probably. It's the one that's got 14,000 views on it or something it like that. Looks like you have 15,000 on it now. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Ballin'. But obviously, Twitch partner and. Not only a lover of Gambit, but obviously a great player at Gambit too. Um, so I'm gonna kind of backtrack a little bit. And mm -hmm. how did you start creating content, whether it be on YouTube, Twitch, anywhere? Like, how did you get into it? Like, what were you doing? Oh, that's my mates. That's their fault, actually. Um, um, I was. Playing, I think I was playing Destiny at one time on my PlayStation, and my mate messaged me, and I was like, "Can you stream on Twitch, please? Because, you know, I'm bored. Blah blah blah. I want to watch, watch your game." And at this point, I was like really confused because I didn't know what Twitch was at all. Um, I'd used like uh, SharePlay or whatever it is on yeah. PlayStation. And I was just like, why don't you just share play with me? You know, you can watch blah, blah, blah. But he wasn't near his PlayStation at the time. And he said, you know, he said he wasn't near his PlayStation at the time. And uh, he wanted to watch some gaming. I was like, his con normal content creators weren't available. I was like, all right, what do I do? He's like, go on to this thing, download the Twitch app on, play on your PlayStation, and then just follow what's what. So that's literally all I did. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> I, I knew nothing about it, didn't know anything about Twitch at all, uh, didn't even know it was a thing, um, and just played video games off of Twitch with, on my PlayStation with like the, uh, the little chat box on the side of it, actually. So yeah, yeah that was a long time ago. I, 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 I kind of actually started streaming similarly to that. I didn't, I, I knew what Twitch was. Um, I had been on it for a while. I had an introdu I, um, um, a, a friend that introduced it to me because he was like in D1. I was an awful raider. I didn't know how to do anything. And he's like, we're going to do this raid. You need to go and find out how to do it. And I didn't really find that YouTube, like watching a tutorial really taught me that much. I didn't feel like it didn't suit my learning style. 
because the way they kind of jump around and sometimes the, the YouTube videos that I was watching then didn't really stay on the same person or specific role that I maybe knew I was going to play. Yeah, um, I think I'm kind of similar in, in relation to that because actually it was funny the other day um, I found some YouTube videos on a different YouTube channel of mine that I have but I can't remember the access for it. So it's like one of those really old ones. And it's from a game that I used to play called Uncharted 3 Yeah. before I played uh, Destiny. And um, it, was a, it was a multiplayer a predominant, like the end game of that game was PvP. And I used to love it. And I can remember getting my first 20 kills in one game without dying at all. It took me actually years to get that and playing it. I, I, cause I really didn't give it. I really didn't give a toss. I just like playing PvP and and having fun. Um, I used to like pick up rocket launchers and water and not kill myself. I had a negative KD for like a, a year, uh, maybe a year and a half before I even realized it was a thing. Um, and you know, I mean, still to this day, if I hit a sniper, I kind of you know cream myself. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I have come, a, in terms of my actual ability to game, I've probably come a, a fair way since then. Um, yeah. So I think my first kind of content that I uploaded was literally these little clips of stupid shit that I would do in the game. Like I'd get, I'd kill five things in a, in a row and, and that would you know, tickle me because I hadn't died. I'm so used to dying. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's my cat, by the way, Nachos. Hi, Nachos. So she will meow throughout this, I'm afraid. It's okay. Um, and I, I definitely have improved in terms of my gameplay since that, since that period. But it was never, it was near, never really something that I considered, like anything other than for me and my friends. Outside mm. of that, yeah, uh, yeah. Because I know that I, I started similarly, like. I had my my brother doesn't live close to me and my mother doesn't I mean she lives in the same area but it's not close and they kept on asking me like what are you what are you playing what does this destiny keep playing because this is still destiny one and I'm like uh this is really kind of hard to explain to people that don't play video games like exactly what it is but they were like legit like wondering what it was so I was like I guess I could just stream it straight from my Xbox to you guys and then I can explain it to you and that's like literally the first like four or five streams that I ever had were just on Xbox, no camera, just me talking to myself, like mm. telling them what like a strike was or like what a patrol was. Like, that's literally like all it was. And then getting introduced to introduce more into Twitch and like somebody was like, you got to do raid and like raids for, for me and, and destiny one were like a daunting thing. They were like, mm. Oh shit. Like it was like nerve wracking. Like I'm sure I've had, I had several panic attacks trying to slam, um, freaking access his back like many times. So like watching Twitch was the way I learned watching somebody like linearly go through the raid was the way I, I learned. So yeah, kind of cool there. Kind of the, the same way. Um, so you majorly stream on Twitch, Twitch partner, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of go through your process of like streaming like what do you do in 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 terms of streaming like do you have an idea of what you're gonna do do you just it's your day off or you have free time and you're like fuck it hit hit start streaming and that's and that's um, what you do like what is your kind of process with that at first i didn't really have a schedule or any of that kind of stuff so going back because i've been on twitch now for over three years and um yeah, so I, it was really, really, really ad hoc for the very first six months. So I also worked full time. Um, and it was literally just something I did in my spare time in between, I think at that point, did I? Yeah, in between like having yeah, friends and that kind of stuff and, and outside, outside wildlife. Um, and then, I don't know, I kind of... There was a point in me that took it a little bit more seriously. So I set up a schedule. Uh, it was something that I had seen others do, and I tried to fit it in around my lifestyle at that point. Uh, and it was predominantly, it was just like kind of whenever I felt like it, more so than anything else. So it was like usually a Friday night, um, a Saturday and a, a Friday night, maybe a Saturday night and and a Sunday kind of afternoon, maybe. 
um, and then maybe a couple of days during the week. Um, but it revolved around trials uh, because I played a game called Booze of Osiris. So on a Friday night, <laughs> I'd end up getting drunk um, playing Destiny 1. Yeah. And that's where I streamed it. Yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of what I did. I just had it as a, a way to hang out and chill out with some pretty cool people. Um, when I can't even remember when I actually decided to make more of a go of it, to be fair, I kind of just stumbled <laughs> into the fact that, oh, this seems to be working. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> um, and then um, I guess uh, when I had a better schedule was around about last summer, um, but I lost my job at that point. So I, I was made redundant and I was going through some pretty heavy, heavy emotional times um, in, in my you know, IRL life, uh, real life life. And that stability, I suppose, kind of helped me get through it. I'd have this um, routine of streaming for a bit and then hanging out in other people's chats for a, a while. and. Um, then I streamed a lot more. I ended up, I think, streaming consistently six to seven days a week for about 10 to 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, I've only recently just changed my schedule again uh, about four to five weeks ago because I've got myself a job again. Uh, it's taken that long since Good my job. redundancy <laughs> uh, to, to get a job. Um, you know, I live in London. It's an expensive, an expensive place to live. So, needing a roof over my head is uh, more than what the Twitch of us can offer. And it's not how I started out. I never did Twitch with the goal or intention of making money off of it. Um, it is brilliant that it pays for my hobby because I see it as a see it as a hobby. I've made a lot of really good friends through it, and it's. My community is, I would say, I'd like to say a very close-knit and open one. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very giving community, and I like to give back to that. So whether that be in uh, doing like char charitable deeds, doing you know the, anything that I get back, I like to put into the stream, the stream itself, um, you know, paying for subs, gifting subs to others, um, just basically being a nice person. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I see like charity streams and things like that, it you know goes on to putting a little bit into that. Um, you know, so I like to think that whatever happens in relation to yeah, you know, and especially the last few months of it anyway, it's definitely helped me out personally. Uh, so, but I'm I'm glad that I happened to use it for what I wanted it to be intended for, which is to give back to the community that I've created. It's a, that's 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 actually really awesome in two different ways. Not only because it's just awesome in itself, it's also awesome because those are actually the two things you just brought up, community and charity, were two things that I was going to ask you about next. Because I actually have some of these things written down. Um, because charity's been a big one for me actually. Uh, I held my very first charity event um, when I hit 500 followers. Uh, I think I've got what. 13,000 followers now, something silly like that. Yeah, just That's over 13,000, like 100, I think is what it was when I looked at your stream last. It's nuts. Um, but at 500 followers, I did my very first uh, charity stream. I didn't realize at that point, too, because, again, I was still very new to Twitch, that other people had done it and were doing it. And I thought, I didn't think that I was like, oh, it's original, but I wanted to use my platform for good. I've always had that and I've got always had a passion for for helping others I don't know why and I don't know where it's kind of come from but just a bit of a backstory I think when I was like seven years old I used to do a fundraiser at school called the the MS Readathon which mm -hmm. is basically you read a bunch of books and people pay you for the amount of books that you've read but that goes to the charity so um you know doing things like that I've always done throughout my whole life ever since I was a child so whether it be you know, raising money by doing like a, a 5k run or um, going hiking or doing something um, and the 
the charities that I've kind of tended to support have been mental health charities, um, disability charities, children's disability charities and cancer charities. Um, and if I can link that into the gaming world, then I will. And there's a number of charities that I've found that do all of that. Obviously, you guys know St. Jude is one of them. Um, they they have a massive uh, influx of gamers that help them raise funds for the children that have cancer over there. There's um, an organization here in the UK called Special Effect, uh, which actually will be Twitch's charity of the month in October. And I'm really, really chuffed and proud of that because they're a UK-based charity. And what they do is they um, they take a disabled human child, adult, and if they want to be able to play games, whether it be a console, whether it be a PC, they make it so that they can physically do that. Mm-hmm. Whether it because they have you know wheelchairs and whatever else that they're able to do, there's a whole bunch of um, like little video blogs that you can look up to see what the amazing and incredible work that they do. It's also um, the Get Wrecked charity of choice. And in December, my clan slash esports org slash whatever you want to call it, kind of other family last rights are mm-hmm. going to be raising money for the organization as well. Um, and just so, now looking know, at looking at your Twitch page now, there's something that, that I want to point out for a lot of people that like may not get into charities. Um, and not only charities, do they raise money for causes that you believe in, which um, I know a lot of those are very dear to your heart. Um, but just looking at your Twitch page, if you go to Polar's Twitch page, it's just twitch.tv forward slash Polar Bear. The first donation thing that you see on there is for a charity. It's not your donation thing. And, yeah, I, and I'm it's the Polar Bears International. Yes, and and I'm seeing this 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 happen more and more with people where they are they're taking their donation page, they're either minimizing it, making it not the huge impact of their stream, or they're removing it entirely, and mm-hmm. they're changing their donations to be charitable only yeah. and i've noticed you, uh, you've had this on here for a while I, I have i mean since day one actually to be honest um i've had that one on there so that's that's always been on there i've uh, we did a i don't do a lot of fundraising for them all the time so that one there is specifically for others to go in and donate to them mm-hmm. um my merchandise um so i get i have merchandise um that um uh, I, whenever there's a hundred dollars in the in the kitty for it, I mm-hmm. will donate it to a charity. More often than not, it's gonna I donate it to Polar Bears International. I actually have a handwritten card from I think it's the CEO of Polar Bears International. Let's see if I can grab that. Hold on, two seconds. I'm just looking at the merchandise, and I want to know if the leggings are man friendly. That's what I want to know. Yeah, it's something. It's the the executive <laughs> director. If that's who it was. Um, I see. And it's she, like, so she just she's like, dear Abby, thanks again for your dedication to the future of polar bears. Your generous gift to our work is greatly appreciated by our entire team. With gratitude. Um, and that's on top of. Uh, that's like handwritten on top of a printed message that they would have sent out to someone. So nice. I just think that that, that was kind of cool because I, I do interact with them on Twitter. Um, you know, so uh, getting little things like that for me means a lot. So it's kind of nice to know that the little efforts that my community and I do we, um, actually do make a difference. And, and I think this, this brings in because we've been – it's like you're reading off my page. We've been kind of, <laughs> I've been trying to bring the community thing into it um, because my actual next question was going to be your thoughts and ideas on growing a community. And it seems like you and the charitable actions that, that you have tied to your stream kind of solidify and like act as a further glue with a community that you have. Because I can know if for people that haven't ever been to your stream before that it is one of the most welcoming communities that I think I'd ever been to. I don't think I, I'd I'd been to your stream. I kind of knew who you were maybe about a year and a half ago, and there was probably it was probably before or right after Forsaken. I started going to your stream more. I started playing with you more, and 
-hmm. your community is very receptive to people that you play with and people that are that are active in your stream that they see a lot and i saw that and there's still there's still people that i play with now over a year later that i met through your stream Mm -hmm. Um, i actually had somebody that i met through your stream that was whispering me in game i was like i have to kind of hold off a little bit i got to do something that yeah that i met through your show so that was really funny because th- i was thinking about this and like what we were going to talk about and with the community and i was like there's somebody that i met through you um or yeah. th- i don't even through your community and there's been a lot of people like that that i've I've branched out and i've kind of met through your community that I've, I've met other places too and they're like i didn't know you're here too and i was like yeah we met in polar stream yeah i met in her discord or her clan yeah, discord I, like it's kind of funny how that is because I I don't know how or why it's just I'm I've always been a very outgoing person. I can be quite reserved in certain things, but I like to think that my stream is a reflection of me, so maybe a <laughs> Salem potty mouth <laughs> bitch <laughs> probably one of them. Um, but um I like to think that I'm a, I'm a half decent human being and um that I'm genuine and I I I say that because I don't mean that others aren't genuine but it's who I am and it's and it's kind of I you I think you being genuine you is the thing I, I think, guess it, I think you being genuine is is um it's a lot more noticeable whenever that you are than maybe some other people I don't, Mm -hmm. I I can't, it's not something I can really pinpoint, but just being around you and and being around you, like to know that like everything you're saying is something that you mean. It's not, I mean, you really don't use sarcasm a lot like I do. Um, And you, you tackle people that are asshats. First and foremost. I do. I mean, (laughs) you're, you're very up, you're very open about, you know, criticizing people that actually need criticism and mm-hmm. not criticizing people that don't need it or i mean it, otherwise I you kind of you, you stay away from criticism yeah unless it's somebody that is, that is is blatantly needing it but more or less like your genuine nature really shines and you have a very good way of portraying that for yourself and to your community and it reflects on them um thank you <laughs> that's very kind of you to say um but yeah, in terms of my community and how it's grown, it's just, I have been very blessed. Um, I have been, I've made some very good friends. And, um, you know, I have, there are two types of friendships with me. There's types of friendships that I won't necessarily be there all the time in terms of you know actively around you and whatever else but i'll be thinking about you and Mm -hmm. i'll pick up on things and there'll be you know this that and the other and whatever else and then there are the types of people that i'm kind of a little bit more involved in um and there are places on twitch where i like to relax and chill out and hang out in and i've made and built relationships up from that when i say relationships i mean friendships nothing else um and I I can remember going and visiting one of them the day I got partnered. And the person turned around and told me that they didn't even realize I streamed. <laughs> and I, that I for me... I love that story. And it, it, it's... Because I know that I, I, had, I had seen you in all kinds of streams before mm-hmm. I actually knew you streamed. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until you put out a tweet saying like, Hey, I don't have people to raid with consistently. Is there anybody here that wants to? And, um, and then, yeah. And then I think that like, I messaged you on, on discord or something and you're like, yeah, yeah let yeah. me get done with streaming. And I'm like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so I've known the Slayerage Cody mm-hmm. for a long time. I've known him since D one days. And he was mates with a guy I used to mod for called um, Gardro. And that's how I met. That's how I met most of the PvE community, to be honest. That's yeah. how I met Glad. That's how I met Cody. Uh, that's how I know, you know, Giggs. Um, because he uh, soloed um, Axis first. 
Yeah. And off the back of that, that's how things kind of progressed. And I was a mod in his channel. And that's where I met them. And um, I was more of a mod when I first started on Twitch than, than a streamer, to be fair. And I still consider myself that <laughs> more so than anything else, <laughs> even with the purple freaking badge. Um, but, and that's how I knew them. And I can remember I was playing a game. I was playing with Glad, actually, and, and probably Slayerage at the same time. And he made the comment as well. It was like, I didn't realize you streamed. And, I, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, you can't tell, but my face was blushing because I was just like, I don't want people to know, you know, <laughs> I just don't want yeah. people to know because I, I, I see it a lot, you know, I'm, I'm a great observer of the Twitch of us and, you know, I, I like to keep myself to myself, but I also want to be open and inviting and I, you know, I don't want people to to think of me as someone who just goes around and pops in here and says hey, and then dips, you know, because that happens. It happens a lot, actually. And that's one of the things that I've been trying to cultivate within my own community. Because like, some people will come in and they'll pop in and they'll say hi and whatever else, and or they'll say that they're sorry for not hanging out. And I'm like, I don't. It doesn't matter for me if you you don't hang out as often, you know. It because people have lives. You know, there's life outside of Twitch, and I'm more than aware of that. Um, the fact that you come back and that there are people who have come back after years is, for me, all that I could ever want. Because you know, I just want it to be a, like a home away from home. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I think you do a very good job of of portraying that and and welcoming and and people being comfortable with coming back and people not being like. Oh no, she's gonna shun me because I wasn't here for six months. And no, it's it's exactly. more of a welcoming thing. Like, holy shit, I haven't seen you in forever. It's fucking nice to see you. Mm. How the hell? How the hell are you? Yeah. What have you been up to? Because I know that, yeah. that just speaking from my own perspective, like seeing somebody come back that you haven't seen in a while is like, holy shit! Like, it's never yeah. like, where the fuck were you? It's like, holy no, shit! Like, sure. what have you been doing, dude? Yeah. Remember this time that this happened and you were there, dude? That was fucking nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, so, speaking, going back on charities again. Mm-hmm. Now, I know, I know some of these are very near to your heart. Like, which, like, how do you pick? Like, as far as, I kind of understand why you've picked certain charities um, for what they stand for. But, like, specifically picking the charities for people that maybe, like, wondering and like how do i pick a charity how do i know this charity is legit like how do you like go through the process of actually picking that charity to represent um there are two things with me i'm a very gut instinct kind of person and i think that comes from uh being around people for a very long time so my my background in terms of my job is human resources yeah um and i think because i've done it for so long, I have this, I don't know, what I'm looking for in a charity. So, I, for example, uh, clanmate and good friend Aura, he does a lot of charities, but to do it towards the dogs, um, yeah. pit bulls, and rescues. And it's like the advice that I give to anyone that wants to do a charity stream, make sure that it's it comes from your heart and only you know where that comes from. So you, you can you know, pick a type of charity, whether it be a cancer charity or whether it be a, a mental health charity, whether it be, you know, something. Um, but if you don't have passion, conviction, and the belief in that charity, then you're not going to be able to raise money for it. And ultimately, that's what you want to do because you wouldn't be doing a charity event for it if you didn't. How much um, research on a charity do you do before you decide to represent them? Like, does there... Not very much, to be honest. Not very much? Uh, no. Not very much at all. Um, sometimes they're word of mouth. Sometimes they're recommended to me by others. Sometimes that's something that I've had in common and I've bumped into them. So, you know, it's kind of something that I've kind of... Oh, hey, I've met you before. Let's do a thing. So, you know... Um, that's how it so t- the ones that I'm working with this year more so is um, the special effect one. I met them about two years ago 
for another charity event. So there's a, an organization in the UK called Games Aid. Mm -hmm. um, Games Aid basically raises funds for about six to 10 different charities, which are all related to children and gaming, whether that be um, outside sports events or inside gaming, it's all related to that. Um, and one of my very first big charity events, I raised, I think it's about 5,000 pounds, which, you know, for my little thing at that point, for a 24 hour stream wasn't too bad 24 hours five grand yeah. um so uh that i was invited actually to a check presentation for that event and at that event Whoa. i met um i met the ceo of of an organization called yuki which is the uk um sort of like gaming um organization type thing which is kind of cool so i have connections in with with them as well um and i've been to a couple of their events like this year in the uk they've been celebrating like 30 years of gaming um one of my favorite games of all time has been tomb raider i met the guy who made the original tomb raider oh, i was that's like awesome it was it was surreal i went to this like place in 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 london had some champagne cocktails with some game developers it was brilliant um and uh yeah so i've been lucky to be able to network with people in the industry as well by doing some of the things that I've done uh, and kept in contact with them as well. Um, and actually, we have uh, in the UK, we've got a, an, another event coming up. So that's in my birthday weekend as well when that happens, which is in October. Your birthday is um, soon. Well, yeah, less than a month. Shut up, shush. Um, which is EGX and EGX this year for the very first time has given out content creator passes. I've got one. So nice. I'm like pretty stoked about that. Um, I'm going to be going and meeting a whole bunch of people and, and I've been trying, so this, because I'm not being able to stream as much, I'm trying to do things within my power to be able to, you know, outside of streaming to be able to benefit my community, like um, doing different partnerships and that kind of thing. And, uh, I, I like to be able to have a belief in something like a product or whatever it is that I'm going to be um, supporting. And I have a few kind of, you know, belief systems and that kind of stuff. So I'm, you know, that's kind of the future, what's going on with me at the minute. Um, looking forward to, to like providing some extra benefits to, to those in my community. So kind of switch gears here for just a second. <laughs> um, Sorry. We, no, no, no. We've 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 kind of you kind of ended up talking about the things I was going to ask you about anyway. So it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. This makes this makes this really easy for me. I just sit here and ask you one question, and and you actually touched on all like half of the ones I was going to ask you in the, in the uh, begin with. We're going to switch gears kind of away from community and straight up content creation. Um, so for you, and I know you talk about this a lot in your stream, um, is, is about improvement as, as you as a gamer. Mm -hmm. um, so what would you say maybe over the course of just Destiny 2, um, we'll focus on that just right now because that's what you're playing majority of. It's what mm -hmm. I play the majority of. Um, what would you say for you has been your biggest help of in-game improvement in Destiny? Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus, that's a question, isn't it? I think um, I I think probably my uh, belief in myself as a gamer, the belief in my own ability to be able to do stuff. So I have um, I know a lot of people who are very good at gaming. They are either really excellent pvp people or really amazing and awesome pve people and i feel that i am very mediocre in the middle of all that if not below um i know that i'm not bad at the game but i don't believe that i'm as good as what i potentially could be if that makes any sense does yeah. that make sense? Yes. Um, and so I think for me, my main struggle with gaming is my own self-belief that I can do something within the game. And the only way that I know to be able to combat that is to keep doing. 
Um, a, uh, actually, I was talking about this on stream earlier. A couple of seasons ago, the season before, season of the Drifter, I um, wanted to improve my PvP. And, you know, I'll never be, I'll never be a, a awesome and amazing at it. But I'm not completely bad if I actually take my time, use weapons instead of fists, and, <laughs> you know, um, Wrong with play with the skull fort and top tree striker. Well, yeah, you know, apparently that's broken. Um, uh, so I spent an entire season gaming with two people. Um, I could never find a stable fourth comp and we got to 2100 we then got to uh i think we got to around about the 3000 mark as well 3100 and then i got in some friends and we got up to 4000 points so i was trying to go and get not forgotten not forgotten a gun that i will never have um because i think i lost my soul when i Though I'm ginger, so we technically don't have one. When I play, <laughs> no, you st you steal souls. Doesn't mean you don't have <laughs> one. It means you steal. It means do? you steal that them. We steal souls. All right, cool. Come on, I know a little um, bit about this. I'm half ginger, so. It's okay. <laughs> 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 and so I, at the end of that season, I because it was really really difficult to go from four thousand to four uh, five thousand five hundred. I basically gave up and cried, um, and didn't touch. PvP for a very long, substantial time after that. I was, I found it incredibly difficult and incredibly heartbreaking because I'd actually tried. And yeah, and I do you know what the 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 funny thing for that for me is that this season with the Revoker, I got my sniper shots within two days, if that, and literally two days later got my points, and I did it solo. And the way I did my points was I, I ran around on my Titan fisting things, having fun and not giving a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I had like an eight win streak at one point and I was just like, what the hell's going on here? Is everything all right? But it's because I changed my mindset into not giving a toss about PvP, which I don't anyway. I, I you know, It's when I start to care about things, that's when I need to kind of take a break <laughs> and go, no. Nah. I see this I see this a lot and I see a lot of people do it because everybody gets this and this used to be with me with raids too like the first like I started playing I wanted to be better at raids I wanted to be able to do mm -hmm. them easily I wanted people to be able to like feel comfortable inviting me to do a raid know mm -hmm. that I would know what I was doing and they wouldn't have to worry about me um mm -hmm. and I, I feel like it's kind of the same way whenever you play pvp a lot of people don't really care that much in quick play I know there are the people that sweat their ass off in quick play but mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to comp, people that maybe necessarily don't play PvP that much and they're playing it to reach a pinnacle weapon, like say reach 2100 to get a recluse or a Luna's or 5500 to get, I've forgotten, they, they, they put so much pressure on themselves and they overthink everything. And it always brings me back to analogy. There's, there's, um, great golfer and he's like, He's very re relaxed, and he's like, I don't really think about anything when I'm playing golf. I walk up to it, pick what club I'm going to use, and I hit the ball, and I walk away. Like, if I sit there and I think about it, and I try to judge shit, try to figure out the fucking angle of the wind and stuff, I'm going to hit that thing exactly the opposite of where I wanted to hit it. If I just sit there, I clear my mind, I don't think about anything, hit it, I do much better. Mm -hmm. um, and I found it's yeah, kind of the yeah. same way with, because I, I, I really get in my head even if it's sometimes it's just it most of the time playing comp i'm actually mm -hmm. playing to get like earn something like i yeah. think about shit way too much and like mm -hmm. sitting back and just like having fun is like you know that's what it's meant for it's a game yeah exactly and that like, was you end I up doing much much better i i i i, I did <laughs> it was weird <laughs> and it's you know i i i just didn't but it's because i didn't care you know, and that's why um, it wasn't something that I was bothered about because I knew I'd eventually get the points at some point, and that was one. I think that was one of the good changes that they made for the Revoker this this season. Um, yeah. And I'm I'm actually really looking forward to seeing and trying out solo. And so I was gonna see that was gonna be my next question with and Shadow Keep. You guys haven't heard yet. 
there is they're changing comp um and there will be a solo queue only comp i was gonna ask if you would try to get 5500 and solo queue i mean i don't see why i you know i'll try that 100 percent um so i think i think that will be that'll be the it'll be interesting to see how it is because i'm wondering whether that's going to be taking like taking rumble out of the picture is Rumble still going to be on the playlist? Or is it only going to be Solo Comp? Because if, if Solo Comp is anything like our Rumble playlist, I'm set. It makes me a little bit nervous now when you say that, especially being a PC player because of how many AFKers there are in Rumble. Yes, let's, let's not talk about it's it. Fine, okay. It's fine if they're on the other team, but, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they're on your team. Yeah. Like, I, I wonder so, if they're, they're going to implement... By the way, yeah. I, so I know somebody who got banned from for AFKing in Destiny. I think they got a life ban. In, um, in Destiny 2. In Destiny 2, they got banned. Uh, they were AFK botting for three months. And they did it as an experiment, to be honest. And um, since uh, cross save has happened, mm -hmm. that ban's been lifted. Th that account that actually was doing it, that, mm -hmm. that account got lifted on the ban. And it took him yep. three months, like three months straight, like game mm -hmm. was on for three months, AFK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it took yep. that long. I, w is there, I wonder if there's a report somewhere on like how many like actual times that account got reported. I have no idea. But it was it, hilarious. I found it funny. It's, I mean, I didn't it's, find it's, it funny It's a little time, sad it and it's a little, now. it's funny if you think about it as like, a, as a, experimental kind of thing yeah. but you know whenever you're the one that's playing it and you're like i'm not, only I mean, playing this x that game guy mode owes me beers because i got him wins man <laughs> I got him. so but um it's one of those things that i i have no idea how you can stop it and i guess for me it kind of shows my age um a little um or maybe that i have Maybe I just shouldn't have morals when I game. I'm always the type of person that's like, you should earn something um, or get, you know, at least attempt to get it. Whereas AFK botting doesn't, it doesn't sit well with me on that because you're getting something for nothing. But not only that, and I know it's not much because, you know, what, two, two uh, tokens in a blue um, <laughs> for, for, for whatever it is that you're doing. But ultimately, at the same time, you're destroying somebody else's game and I, that's very selfish i don't really get any kind of enjoyment out of it even say per se there was like something like the afk forging like you lower your light and you're not getting matched with anybody even if you were you can't do anything to the enemies and they're just farming for materials it's not the reason i play the game like the reason i play the game is very much so what i initially like i started this podcast on which is improvement and getting better i'm not getting any better by turning on my pc mm. and setting a macro and sitting in an instance doing nothing will it make my life easier in some aspects maybe like leveling or something like it's gonna be very very minute doing any kind of afk activity for me it, it i wonder i wonder what their cost for electricity and everything else keeping their pc running would be for the hours that they do afk and whether the cost is actually worth it I'm not sure if 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 that's I don't know because I end up keeping my PC on most of the time anyway. Oh, fair enough. I don't because I, don't. I I usually have um a or multiple streams up mm -hmm. even whenever I'm sleeping or at work. Mm. Um, it's, it's just kind of it, it's just kind of what I do, and, and you can there's also applications you can have that have you in streams as well. Um, mm -hmm. so I have that, um, because as, as, as uh, you know, too, like I, I, I go to a lot of smaller streamers and I don't just go to, I don't just same. go to big streams. I don't no, go same. to, I, I actually tend to avoid big streams unless I was in that stream and it's, and it's growing part where I feel like I'm a part of the community. I think it's really difficult for people that are big streamers to actually feel like they have a community. 
or yeah. to me or to me it feels like it's difficult i can see that um difficult for me to feel like i'm a part of the community whenever i just enter a big stream yeah i get i get that i can i can appreciate that one actually um a lot i can but then i know that i've also been around some pretty big streams for a while um and i've kind of got to know them and the communities within it quite well um so i've been very yeah because just just as me as a viewer there's been a lot of people in the past year and a half that have gotten parted in the destiny community oh yeah which you and there's i a lot. which you and i are both very active in mm -hmm. and the ones that i was there not necessarily maybe when they first started but like you know they weren't at 100 viewers oh, yeah. or 75 wherever they at for whatever it is it's partner and i was there whenever they were at five or ten viewers Mm -hmm. And not necessarily saying that I created the community, but I feel like I'm way more a part of their community now that they've oh, yeah. even grown. And that's what I want to see them grow because obviously it's what they want. They want a bigger community. Yeah, yeah, they they yeah. want to have a fun community that enjoys hanging out with each other. I feel much more mm -hmm. involved as per se if I went to um, X streamer. Most of the people that were really big in Destiny 1, like I kind of don't feel like it. You go to the community and it's kind of yeah. like you say hi to the streamer. They may say hi back. Yeah. And it's really difficult to, to get your foot in to feel like you're a part of the conversation or a part of the community as opposed to somebody that, you know, yeah. starts out a little see, bit the smaller. Only, the only... The only... See, I didn't really watch streams in day one. I didn't really watch them. I didn't so really. I, w I watched mm, three streamers pretty much in D1. It wasn't until D2 yeah. that I started watching more people. And And so for me, like... I have, in terms of D1 streamers, there are probably two or three um, that I regularly hang out with. And it's not based on the fact that they do Destiny or D1. Um, one's because they talk a lot about mental health. Yeah. And that's uh, a big one for me. And the other one is that they, they play a lot of uh, Zelda. <laughs> 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 uh, and 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 he's a super cool dude, and I'm very grateful for his friendship. Zelda Breath They're... of the Wild is is the, the the my favorite game that I've never played. Same, actually, same. And one of um one of my colleagues at my new job, his her her son was gonna lend me his um Switch to play it. So I'm 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 hell of excited if he does. So. Yeah, that's, that, He's that's, also a Fortnite fan, which is quite funny. Doesn't even matter who is streaming that game. I really enjoy just watching that game and the, mm. the pure aesthetic and the emotion and the the textures of even just the music and and the game together. Yeah. Are well, it's one of the, the things I used to really love the most great about, game. about Sean and hanging out in his streams mm -hmm. when I was there. And, uh, but yeah, it's Something actually that I've been doing a little bit more of, and you may have noticed, is um, I have a stream team. Um, you're part of that stream team. Yes, I am. And I have been trying to engage with some other people of like mind to be able to come into my stream team. And I think we've, we've got quite a nice lot there now. I think it's about 25, 30 other streamers. Mm -hmm. And they all kind of range from around about the five to the 30 depending and you're a really good and awesome bunch of people to know and i'm hoping that each one of you that's kind of come into that will network with each other and become friends with each other if you haven't done already i know that you're good friends with one of my mods you're and you mm -hmm. know um, a lot of them hang out with you anyway which i feel is really awesome uh but that's the kind of thing that I want to do going forward is to try and foster a, I don't know, kind of, it's not like a global kind of community type thing, but you know, it's. We're going to fucking take over the world. What are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, my community is pretty <laughs> damn global already anyway, to be fair. Yeah, so, there's people yeah, everywhere. There is people everywhere. I've got people from like Brazil and like over in Australia and up and I don't know wherever else so you know they're all over the place and, and I think that's one of the wonderful and awesome things about Twitch but that's something that I want to be growing a bit more in terms of you know, the team and I want to be there kind of as a mentor I guess for 
for them. I've even set up like little separate things in my own Discord so that they can, you know, they could just ping me or whatever. Um, I'm always, I may not, you know, I, I always respond to my DMs. Um, I may not get back to you straight away, depending on what I'm up to and depending on the the DM itself. Um, but yeah, I will always try and get back to you. So I have no issue with ask, uh, you know, people asking questions and all that kind of stuff in relation to streaming, streaming tips, um, you know, things that you would and wouldn't do, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I sent I sent out messages for the for this podcast to I think ten people at the same around the same time, all in the same afternoon. Whenever I sent them out to you guys, and you and one other person pretty much immediately responded. Still waiting for a few people to respond, <laughs> but you, you <laughs> and one other person, you and one other person responded almost immediately. And uh, well, we're recording your podcast right now, and the other person's was recorded about two hours ago. Yeah, so the, well, you, the, you're the, good people, Peter. The, so the people that responded, and I, and I've noticed the people that um, you and that other person have created and this is kind of when i'm going into like improving yourself on twitch and youtube and just as content creation and in, in, in general both of you have created almost subconsciously just by being genuine people you guys have created communities and it's it's a lot that i don't see from even maybe a lot of big streamers i don't i don't i just don't feel like there's a sense of community i know that that may be my bias on um how I feel like whenever I go into those streams, like if I wasn't there when they first started or I haven't been there for a really mm -hmm. long time, you don't really feel like you're as much, but e mm -hmm. either both, both of you, um, I don't think that that's true necessarily. If, if I were just a, a normal person, you know, I new to Twitch, I would feel like that I belonged because of your community that you have fostered. So and, and one of the one of the hardest things I would say as a streamer and as a and it's actually even harder as a partnered streamer is to grow and um you know a lot of people might think that you know getting the tick and getting to partnership is the be all and end all but there isn't and once you're partnered if you do not continue to stay dedicated if you do not continue to be engaging and stay driven you know there will be it'll change and that was one of the things that one of the very biggest things that I, I told myself was that once you are partnered this is just the beginning yeah and the grind continues as such and I don't like using that in relation to twitch because I'm not grinding for anything you know <laughs> ultimately I'm not on twitch um I mean, I, you're, I you're just, grinding to kind of upkeep your community to keep yeah. it to keep it. You know, does it doesn't matter how good or big the community is. You kind of like it. No, it I want to keep needs it a little relevant. Bit of guidance, you know, I want to keep it relevant, and I want to keep it fun, and I want to keep it entertaining. And um, you know, that's why I'm doing all these extra side of things outside of stuff. And I want to want to maintain my roots, and my roots are to have fun and do good. All right, so. Before I start getting, I'm going to start talking more about Destiny specifically here mm -hmm. after this question. If um, I were just a random person, say that you actually knew in real life and they're like, hey, I know that you're a, a Twitch partner. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm interested in that. Like, what would you recommend for me? Like, I, I want to I get started. I'm playing X game, whatever it is. I like this game, whatever. I would, I would like to do that. Like, what would you tell that person? What would be like your, um, kind of like a short, like elevator pitch on like how to be either successful on Twitch? Like, what would you tell that person? Mm. See, I think it depends on your mindset in terms of that. From from my perspective, is that just don't think that you'll be successful. <laughs> so, <laughs> um. <laughs> It's a case of having expectations and setting expectations for yourself. You know, ultimately, I started off on Twitch because of a friend who wanted to watch me game. And then I enjoyed mm -hmm. it and I had fun. And it's kind of tumbled from there. Um, 
but that's not for everyone. And if somebody were to tell me that this is what it would end up with, I probably wouldn't have started, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's... I think you have to be true to yourself and true to your own principles. And that's going to be for you to define. Um, what is your purpose? You know, my purpose on Twitch is to teach people how to play frickin' Gambit and to <laughs> destroy blue blueberries who use bows. Okay? That, that is ultimately my purpose. Um, Fucking blueberries with bows, dude. I, I, yeah, tell me about it, that freaking hush thing, honestly. Um, but I, in all seriousness, though, it is, you know, what are your principles? You know, are you going to be the type of person that's al along the lines of Dr. Disrespect? So you have your own persona, you have a separate persona. A caricature. So what you put out on, and yeah, exactly, you have a character, all that kind of stuff. Um or are you going to be someone that's like educational? You know, is it some? You know, is it going to be you know, games that you want to do? Because you don't have to do games and stuff. There's all sorts of things. Music is a great one. One of my favorite Twitch people. She is an amazing, awesome, brilliant musician. Um, I know. I've been. I've. I've watched her since you. You introduced me to her. Oh, brilliant! So, yeah, that's one of my favorite things to to have done actually. And she's she's one of my favorite. Don't get to hang out there as much as I want to, but she's like somebody who is incredibly talented and has a heart of gold, you know. Um, and there's an, I don't know whether there's a lot of that kind of space on Twitch, but I'm glad I found that. So I feel that if you are wanting to get into content creation, have, I, I would say have a set of three core principles and never forget them. That's interesting. Hmm. Well, that brings us in to the next part. You did mention Gambit. Obviously, mm -hmm. you are very well known in the Destiny 2 community as being the Gambit Queen. Whether yeah, like I don't that, know where that came whether from. Whether you actually. like that title or not, it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of stuck. It's kind of just be been there. I don't know who came <laughs> up with it. I didn't. I didn't start it. it just kind of happened. Me neither. It's just like I. I actually can't. I really can't remember the day that somebody called me the Gambit Queen. I was just like, yeah. And then the next thing I know, I'm calling it myself. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Okay, fine. It'll be stuck. Um, and, and I'll try not yeah. to 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 dip into what you're going to talk about in your video because I kind of I kind of just want to watch that by itself. But uh, say there okay. is a this will, this won't happen. But there's a hundred thousand dollar tournament tomorrow. It's Gambit Prime. Mm -hmm. You can change one thing about the game. What would you change about it? Hmm. The ability to one phase a boss. I'd remove the um, stop mechanic on the first phase. To remove the immune phase after what is it? Once he hits yep. one third health, you'd remove mm -hmm. that immune phase. I'd remove that. The bosses would be more meltyable. Mm -hmm. Melt meltyable, more meltyish. Yeah. I don't know. Cheesier. I don't really know. Dead. <laughs> um, this is an easy question, but Gambit or Gambit Prime? Gambit Prime. Do you think that there is space for both of them in the game? Yes. That there is a need to have both of them? No. If I don't think there's a need, but there's definitely space. I've, I kind of feel like that Gambit's going to be out... Because they've talked about it in Luke Smith's and his uh, director's yeah, no, cut. Yeah, I know, and that's something that I'm going to be addressing in my if new that, video. If um, that were to stay in mm -hmm. over Twitch, over Gambit Prime, Twitch Prime, <laughs> over Gambit Dude. Prime, what would, yeah. do you think they would have to change about regular Gambit? Just saying in the off chance that actually stayed in. Yeah, no, if that were to stay in. Um... Nothing. You could incorporate the two. I add in the the roles, but as it is, there isn't anything that I would change about 
uh, normie gambit, as I call it. Normie gambit. <laughs> yeah, normie gambit. What what changes to gambit do you think are gonna happen? Just let's say gambit prime. We're gonna we're gonna think that gambit prime is gonna stay in the game. We think that okay. more than likely regular normie gambit is not gonna be in the game. Probably not in shadow keep but i'm guessing from what they've said maybe the update after shadow keep it may be taken out mm -hmm. just based um, on whatever activities they're adding to you i've heard that it's going to be at least a year before anything does fundamentally change okay that's what i heard but i don't know um and i didn't hear that from a dev so i don't again i don't really know um Um, I think the armor needs to come from the game prime, or you remove it itself. Rem either either have the armor for Gamba Prime, make it relevant. There's perks and things that I don't think necessarily are relevant. Um, out of the four roles, only two I believe are even useful. Three of them aren't even useful post prime. Um, I so it's it's kind of like they're irrelevant. It's it's uh, almost kind of like a a collector and a reaper could be one, and an invader and a sentry could be one. It could, yeah. Because I mean, yeah, if yeah, you're going yeah. around killing everything, you're going to be able to pick up the moats anyway. And what mm -hmm. is a collector doing? Not shooting things. <laughs> mhm, mm mhm, mm yeah. So I, you know, I feel that that aspect could be reworked and rejigged, um, or taken out completely. Not have them, because you know, no one actually. Where's the armor anyway? No, I I don't. I I it every time I go in and I'm just like it breaks my heart. It's like well, you know. I've only grinded out all three armor sets on one character, so if I'm you know. Yeah, I have all three on all. I have two all thirds four of the three. two thirds of the time I'm not playing on a character that even has a set, so mm -hmm. kind of limiting myself there. So for somebody that. You play a lot of Gambit and Gambit Prime solo. Mm -hmm. What kind of tips, advice would you give to somebody? Because I know there's a lot of people that play solo. Um, and I know it's it's a very difficult game mode to play without comms with somebody. Even if you're in a fire team with them, if you're not in comms yeah. with people, it's kind of difficult to, to, to do I it. Just, so it's about awareness, I think, and timing. So you'll always know when you'll have... Um, primevals being spawned or uh, people invading because you, you'll see it if you're paying attention to the game there's like the bar it tells you how many moats people have got you can see it all right so you know when someone's going to bank moats you know you're going to be so like prepping you know you're going to be like oh they've got a whole bunch of moats on the other side i need to get to the bank in case they bank them so i can kill the blockers or that kind of stuff or it's like i've got this many moats i can go and bank that means they can we get our invader can invade um you know so the way I play as a solo player is I'm constantly playing and thinking that I'm all four. Yeah. Um, and it will depend on which mode I'll play. So I'll play two modes. I'll either be a Reaper or I'll be an Invader. And as an Invader, I am trying my best to make sure that I can get over and invade. Okay. So I will make sure I have 10 or 15 modes and see that my you know, other you know, gamers are getting other moats etc and so forth so i can either prevent the other team from banking um which will give us more time so that i can see get my team over to be able to bank some moats so i can go and invade or um you know i'm just like i'm picking away at um ads dotted around because i normally have like a when i'm invading i normally either have a shotgun or a, a pulse rifle and um heavy if i have it i tend to use it when i'm invading um, although I don't always use that, so it will depend on the kind of invading. If I'm being a reaper, then I'm literally doing anything and everything. So I don't even think, because I'm normally on my Titan <laughs> and I'm normally just around fisting things. You know, depending on the map, I normally get two or three massacres, a uh, massacre medals, a, a game, um, just with the amount of things that I'm killing, but I'm still constantly thinking how many moats do I, you know, how many moats do I have? Have they, are they going to invade? If I'm, you know, if I'm also 
in, in invader mode, I will be hunting their invader down. So I will make sure that before I invade, I kill any invader that comes in. So I know that the sentry post is the one that marks it and one that's supposed to check that out and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, there's, you know, come on, how many of us actually play the game with the sentry there? Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I will always, if I'm an invader, I will spawn camp people. I will make sure that they, yeah, if I see them, they're, they're dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and then I'll go invade and, and hopefully ha have that not happen to me. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, I'm constantly thinking about what's next. What do I do? How do I do this? And if I'm playing solo, I will tend to try and, if I know I don't have a well, for example, um, I will try and force the primeval uh like force the the um damage phases faster so i will on purpose kill all three wizards on the very first one i will on purpose kill all three wizards on the second one so that i know that when it comes around to times three i can at least kill the boss on my own i can yeah. probably more often than not kill the boss on my own anyway other times two but um for absolute avoidance of doubt that's what i will do especially if i've got a really good head lead on um the other team so yeah i did Go i did he again. see a, a an interesting write-up and, and i've been meaning to ask you what you thought about this about a guy that he, he wrote a really big write-up on reddit and okay i, I, I don't I, read reddit and i and i kind of tended i tried to implement what he was doing um because he's he's somebody he's like admittedly he's like he, he doesn't like to play with other people he plays solo and he mm -hmm. i think he said he has a 75 percent win rate in gambit yeah and same. His his philosophy was first and foremost, I'm gonna play a century because nobody wants to play a century. Nobody wants mm -hmm. to sit by the bank and kill the blockers. Um, there's more than likely gonna be one or two people that are gonna be fine with just going around killing everything because it's the most fun thing to do in this game. Let's face it, mm -hmm. this game has great mechanics, shooting mechanics feel awesome. People are just gonna want gut wanna go and slay ads. Mm -hmm. Those people are probably gonna be picking up the moats too. Um mm -hmm. probably 75% of your matches, there's going to be somebody that wants to invade. And they're not necessarily going to be looking at killing any blockers or anything. They're probably going to be close to, if not camping the portal. Um, I did this for about five matches. I think I, I won three of the five. And it was mm -hmm. all... I don't know. I don't remember what the other team were, but it was all four solos on my side, and it did. It did. It, did, it turned out pretty well. The only time that I ever yeah. went and picked up moats is whenever they were going to bank and they just physically couldn't pick up anymore, or they yeah, were yeah, ones yeah. that were really far away from the other team. And I noticed yeah. that it, it did help, you know, focusing on invader because it's something that I like to do anyway. Is focus on the invader mm -hmm. whenever they come in. I don't even care how many moats I have. I just focus on the invader. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. It's like half the time when I invade, no one focuses. No, it's just... rare. And fuck they all, like dude. one of that's one of that's one of the things with the mechanic in Prime. It's like the the banks you you can stand on the bank and suck their moats. I love that mechanic. I actually I love the fact that we can drain them. I also feel it's probably one of the worst mechanics because it actually um, disadvantages the other team if it's done rightly so much. Like you, um, the amount of times when I um, so as a when I play solo and I'm I'm the uh, invader. I tend to do the same stuff as what you would do in terms of um, kill the blockers. Because that's one of the fundamental things. I, it's like the one thing that I'm screaming at my TV for. <laughs> it's like, kill the bloody blockers. They're sucking the moats. I don't care about the 15 moats that you've got. I can get that in about 20 seconds. You, you, we need to get rid of those blockers. Otherwise, we're, we're just helping feed them. Um, and so that is, it, I would agree with, in terms of that particular write-up, that it's a fundamental part of the role. Um, if that's what someone wants to do, but as, you know, as a as an invader, that's what I tend to do anyway. But I'm not every person, so imagine having four polars on a team. That would be <laughs> hilarious. That would be hilarious. So we've kind of covered everything I got. I have two questions to kind of end this. Okay. As you kind of go away from the improvement of everything, um, since you 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 play Gambit so much, you do love it. What is the one thing that that you really enjoy about Gambit? more than any other game modes that are currently in Destiny 2. Like what what draws you to are, it and what has drawn things. you to it? There are two things. Because I used to play a lot in teams. I've played a bit more in teams recently just because AFK people have been annoying me. 
Um, that's one of the biggest downfalls of solo AFKs. Um, for me, there is there's the thrill, there's the adrenaline rush of when the games are close and you can defeat a boss. Um, you know, there was a, a game I played the other day where I was the invader, but I did 45% of the primeval damage. <laughs> as well as kill 15 guardians, as well as bank 20 to 30 moats, as well as kill you know, 25 things. Um, I like the fact that I can be an all-rounder. I also like the fact that if I'm on my titan and I'm slaying, I will double all of that. Outside of the invading side of things, I, you know, I tend to do between, on average, 60 to 80% primeval damage every single time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will do between 30 and 45 to 50, like, um, killing things and the amount of half bank medals I get. It's like, geez, what, what, what is the rest of my team doing? So, you know, it's, um, I like the fact that, and I just, I guess, I guess I just enjoy that side of it. I enjoy melting bosses. I'm the invading side. I'm neither, neither here nor there. Um, Ultimately, it's if I'm facing a challenging team, uh, it's more fun and and I like the rush. So, final question for you: What are you most looking forward to coming the release of Shadowkeep? I'm looking forward to Bubble Titan. <laughs> We're two for two on that answer. <laughs> just, just so that I recorded the podcast with Sweat earlier, and he answered the same thing. <laughs> Bubble Titan, <laughs> the return of Bubble Titan. Yeah, as, as, I love Sweat. Sweat is awesome. It <laughs> just makes me laugh that I asked the same question to both of you, and you guys both answered the same exact way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I really didn't even think about it. The two people that I had scheduled for today were both Titan mains. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, just... there we go. Titan for life, though. Any yeah. other things you would like to add as far as going with improvement, whether it be with your content, um, with your your stream, your YouTube, your community, um, in game, anything you want to add before we wrap this up? Trust your instincts. They don't tend to let you down. All right, thanks, Polar. Welcome. Anytime.